The story of Lut going to Sodom and Gomorrah and all of its lessons of ethics about avoiding sexual immoralities are the same in both the Quran and the Bible. But we notice one small difference. The Quran presents Lot as a righteous man, a good example for humanity. But the Bible says that Lot was drinking wine every night and sleeping with both of his daughters until both of his daughters got pregnant from him. That is a very weird thing to say about one of the best people that God chose for us to be an example of goodness. The story of David is more or less the same in the Quran and the Bible, but we noticed one small difference. The Quran presents David as a righteous man, a good example for all of us. But the Bible says that David saw Uriah's wife bathing and she was very beautiful, so he got her to sleep with him until he got her pregnant. And to cover up for that, he ordered to put Uriah on the front line where the fighting is fierce, then withdrew from him, so he will be struck down to die. This is another example of turning one of the best people that God chose for us into an adulterer and a killer. That is very weird. Then the story of Abraham. The story of Abraham is more or less the same in both the Quran and the Bible. But we noticed one small difference. The Quran presents Abraham as a righteous man, a good example for humanity. But the Bible says Abraham committed incest. He actually married his own sister yet again destroying a good example of righteous men chosen by God and presenting them in a very weird way. Next is the story of Solomon. Solomon is more or less the same in both the Quran and the Bible, but we noticed one small difference. The Quran presents Solomon as a righteous man, a good example for humanity, but the Bible destroyed the reputation of Solomon by saying that he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. Again turning a righteous man into a disgusting example. That's very weird. After that, we read the story of Moses in both the Quran and the Bible, but we noticed one small difference. Again, the Quran presents Moses as a righteous man, a good example for humanity. But the Bible claims that Moses was a dead person. The Bible claims that he ordered his army to kill the men, to kill the married women, to rape the virgins and to kill the children and to even kill the infants. Even if these people were extremely bad people, what did the babies do? Why do you have to kill babies? Bible authors just keep destroying the reputation of prophets for some reason. The story of Noah and the ark is more or less the same in both the Quran and the Bible, but we notice two small differences. The Quran presents Noah as a righteous man, a good example for humanity, and God saved him and the believers using the ark. The Bible on the other side claims that Noah had to collect all kinds of animals from all over the world in the ark, like giraffes and penguins from the North Pole and bears, and put all of them on one ark, which is for me very difficult to really imagine. And also Bible claims that Noah was a drunk, which is also very hard to imagine. Because if there's a guy with a drinking problem who told me that God talked to him, I will not believe him. How is it fair to punish people for not believing a drunk guy? Yet again, Bible authors destroy a man of example. And then we read the story of Adam and Eve. We can't really say this time that it was the same in both the Quran and the Bible. Yes, God created Adam and created Eve, and then they entered paradise, then they ate from the tree, which was a sin. But the story and the meaning of life and the purpose of us being here is completely different. The Quran presents God as all merciful. He sent us to earth in this life as a test to know who is good and who is bad in deeds. If we are successful and if we are good human beings, we will go back to him and enter the kingdom of heaven or paradise. But the Bible presents God as an angry person who is punishing us for a sin that Adam committed or Eve committed, for a sin that we didn't commit. The Bible is presenting God as a person who hates women especially. He's making them feel immense pain in birth as a punishment because Eve seduced Adam to eat from the tree or whatever. Even though newborn women are innocent, they didn't commit any sin, but God is punishing them too and making them suffer too. 
that is very hard for us to believe. And we found more verses portraying God in an unbelievable way. For example, God wrestled with Jacob and Jacob won. Pero te imploro que me liberes. I will not comment on that. God promotes slavery and says it's okay if we beat up our slaves because they are our property. God was tired after creating the universe in six days and he needed to rest. It is very hard for me to imagine that our God needed rest. And all of this pornography in Ezekiel 16, it's not even suitable for YouTube. How can it be suitable for a book that is attributed to God? And all of these other verses that are talking about boiling up and eating our own children. The Bible didn't only destroy the reputation of prophets, but also the image of God himself, portraying him as limited, hateful, violent, and sexist. That is very hard to believe. And finally, the story of Jesus in the Quran and in the Bible, which is making a lot of misunderstanding and debates these days. Quran says simply that Jesus was born a miraculous birth without a father to Virgin Mary. And the Quran portrays both of them, Jesus and Mary, as sinless, perfect people. We should learn from them. We should take them as examples. But the Bible has very hard to understand verses about Jesus. We counted more than 60 verses saying that Jesus is a man sent by God, is a son of man, Jesus is a prophet, Jesus is a servant, Jesus was praying to God, Jesus saying they will know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Jesus said he was sent by God to deliver a message, like messengers. Jesus had limited knowledge. Jesus said that God is greater than him. Jesus said that God is his father and our father too, not only his father. Jesus was tempted by the devil and the devil can't tempt a God. Jesus said that he drive out devils by the finger of God. Jesus said that by himself he can do nothing. Jesus told people don't call me good because only God is good and so on. But the church, for some reason, still claims that he is God, basing their claims on very ambiguous verses that can have a lot of meanings and ignoring the very clear ones that we just mentioned. If the church's Pauline understanding is correct and we will all be judged on faith alone, not based on following the rules, how is it fair for people before Jesus who had to obey the laws to have eternal life in heaven? They have to obey the laws to have eternal life and you just have eternal life because you have faith? How is that fair? I can't believe that God is not fair, giving us simpler tests than the test he gave to people before Jesus. And we both have the same result. How is that logical? And we found some verses that contradicts the ethical standards of Jesus himself. Like for example, Matthew 10, 34, do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Sword? And Matthew 10, 35, for I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, which is very hard to believe about a perfect person like Jesus. Why does the Bible portray a perfect human like Jesus this way? That's very weird. Even historical events 